Hey, welcome back, everyone. All right. So as you might have seen from the last video, uh, at the time of recording, I didn't fully understand, um, funny enough, the script that I had uh, created, but I pushed it a little bit further and uh, figured, hey, I, I can not only figure this out, but, you know, Integramat was able to do updates every hour. And I mean, it could actually do every five minutes, but that would get really expensive. So how could we make a bot that updates every minute? Now, um, one of the projects was to create a countdown timer bot that resets at the same time each week. And so in order to do that, yeah, having a timer that updates every half an hour is not as good as a timer that updates every minute. And then the second I figured that out, well, why wouldn't we just take that and apply it to the token update bots as well and then have minute by minute pricing. Um, and let me, I guess it would have been a good idea to start with this, but let me pull it up now and show you the end results of all three bots. So uh, here, take a look. If we switch over to Discord, which <laughs> let's see what page it loads on. Maybe I'll edit this out. Maybe I won't. All right. Um, so hopefully my face isn't covering these, but you can see uh, the three bots over here. So uh, this is the timer bot. These are the token bots and they do update every minute. So now let us switch back over to Replit where I'm still hosting this. Now Replit rather explicitly does mention when you start it up, this is not a production server. Now I'm only running these bots on a test server and in one other Discord server. So I feel I'll get away with it for now. Soon I will probably migrate it uh, to somewhere a little bit more permanent like uh, our Pragma Flow servers uh, for now. Well, here it is, so, so let's just jump in. So we've made a couple of updates to the main function. Um, and I don't think I will start with that quite yet. Uh, so let's number one, just jump into the updates that we made to the token bots. Um, so you can see I, I've done a little bit of splitting out the code. And uh, right here we have, and I've already gotten some really great suggestions on how this can be uh, refactored. And I, I, ju I just haven't done it yet. So I think I'll do that in the next version. Uh, but basically, so what we're doing here is we wrote a function to make the call to Nomics to get uh, the token price every minute. So basically what I did in Integromat in the first video, I've now just migrated over here. Uh, so it took a little bit of effort. Uh, here is a uh, kind of error handling that I haven't figured out yet. So I just commented out. Uh, but basically we define the call, we send it off, uh, we check if it's okay. And um, if not, we raise the exception. And I'll make all this code actually available. And then what we're doing is, um, so because I don't actually know what order Nomics is gonna send me the results in, uh, I thought I would know that, but it didn't stay consistent. So I just put some basic conditions here. Now I'd probably do this with a loop if it was a bit more elaborate. Um, and I started trying that, but since I couldn't get it going, and since the point is really to deliver and just get to that next step, uh, what I decided was an if function would do just as well. Uh, because again, I know the two tokens that I'm looking for, and it's pretty straightforward and, you know, I don't need to scale it up in a crazy way. So here, if, um, you know, the first entry is, uh, sorry, if the currency name of the first entry is equal to Orem, uh, Orem 2, then assign that uh, to the variable AP. And otherwise, if um, the currency is equal to Raider, then we'll assign it to the other. So once we've looped through the two responses that we're going to get, um, you know, basically by the end of it, I have my two values assigned. And then we do a little formatting here. I think there's probably a better way I could do that. Um, and then, you know, just a bunch of diagnostics. And, and so I added in these line breaks here when I print, just because when, it, when it's all a blob of text, I have a lot of trouble reading it. Um, it maybe it's a little bit of an ADD thing, but I, I find like the structure and visual structure things really matters to me. Uh, so I just added these line breaks in everywhere to make it a bit easier to read. And I also added in these uh, three chevrons because again, it just made it easier for my eye to see, you know, what's happening and, and pick out the parts that I've intentionally printed. Um, so here we go. I update, uh, I call this function bot name update, which we'll take a look at in a second. And I pass it the variables. Um, you know, this is what the nickname is going to be. This is the token, and this is the server I'm going to. 
So let's take a look at update bot name. Now, so we have the new name that we want to send. We have the token name uh, that we're updating. Uh, sorry, the token name. So that's the token for the bot uh, so that we can authenticate. And then we have the server that I want to update to. So uh, here I said if the server explicitly, if I've defined it as the Crypto Raider server, uh, otherwise the default or fallback is my test server. It felt cautious to have things fall back to the test server rather than the other way around. Um, and then here, so we have the authentication, which is the string bot plus the token, which um, you would put those in the secrets uh, environmental variables there and then just reference it using os.environ.get uh, um, and then the string version of the token name. And of course, you have to import OS in order to use that. Uh, to send the requests, and this is on both pages, you do need to import requests. Uh, so those are the libraries that are being used. Uh, all right, so this is the, the, you know, the call out to the bot and we update the name uh, over here. And then we just check to make sure that we got a uh, 200 success uh, code and we print out the response. And that's just, again, for debugging. So that is how the uh, token yeah, that is how the uh, token updating is happening. And we can take a look at the timer bot as well and see how they're all using the same callout function. So uh, if we take a look, I've imported a few things, date time, um, date parser, although uh, I've seen versions that don't use date parser. And actually, it, date parser is really cool because it'll do kind of a plain language. Like I actually wrote, uh, you can see it down here, midnight CST, and then it parses that. Um, I was originally saying Thursday, because that's, uh, sorry, Wednesday, because that's when the reset was, but it was like not picking the right Wednesday. It was either picking the Wednesday in the past and, and it wasn't very reliable. So I'll probably work that out. Uh, PYTZ helps us do time zone. And then uh, of course I'm importing my update bot name function. So the timer update function, uh, what it's gonna do is it's defining CST. It's getting the time now in CST because this this is going to reset at midnight on Wednesday in CST. And it just uh, often the advice is to work, you know, do the time zone conversion last. I tried that in this case, especially because we're exactly on midnight. It just was so much easier to start in CST and stay there. <clears throat> so uh, moving along here, um, what is next? Oh, yeah, uh, this is a little thing I put in just. I wanted to test the changeover because the trickiest part is when the timer hits zero, it needs to reset to seven days. And uh, rather than waiting and being able to test once a week, I just made it so that I could see, hey, if the day is tomorrow, uh, then I should see zero days. And then this lets me um, swap basically my variable, uh, you know, tomorrow equals now plus uh, one day. So basically, I'm changing my time from now to tomorrow. I'm basically making the system think that it's tomorrow. Uh, so I can see what will happen tomorrow. Uh, hope that made sense. It was a little wordy, maybe. Uh, okay, moving on. Um, so yeah, we want to find the next reset date, right? So that's where I'm using date parser dot parse midnight CST. Um, so that's giving me that value. And again, a lot of just debugging and printing here, because this was really tricky. Date math is frankly a pain in the ass. Um, and so with that, I just really needed to cut as many kind of holes into this black box as I could. Uh, so then this is really simple. Time till reset equals uh, find next reset minus now. So that's the difference in the days. Uh, so uh, that so the time is working, but the day wasn't really working in that. And so what I just did is I decided to figure out the date logic separately, which, which felt like the right call. Uh, so here, if there's um, you, you know, because the weekday that I'm resetting on is Wednesday, which is two. So I need to handle things differently if we're before Wednesday or if we're after Wednesday. Now, uh, I got a, a really awesome code review. And what was suggested there was basically first doing this math and then saying, if the day is less than zero, add seven. So that's a different way of doing it. Uh, I tried to add that in, but I had to change too many things and I just uh, didn't get back to it yet. But uh, d definitely, definitely something I want to add in, uh, although this is working really reliably anyways. Um, and then, yeah, we just compose the timer string. So this is ultimately the name of the bot. So our days left uh, variable assigned here, plus the 
uh, time till reset dot seconds. Um, this is divided by 360, but uh, the double slash gets rid of the remainder. Um, and then again, over here, we're dealing with uh, the, the remainder from that using the, uh, the modulo function and uh, just putting this all together. So we print out the timer string and we do the bot name reset. So we send it to the crypto raiders uh, server and we send it to the test server. Whew, right, uh, that's a whole lot of stuff. Um, and we're not even done. So there's still a couple of other pieces. So if we go to endpoints.py, um, this is, I don't know if this was called server originally or something like that, but I renamed it to endpoint because essentially that's what it's doing. Uh, I'm not using this guy down here, but the app route, just whenever this is pinged to the root URL, it's gonna run the following. Uh, so it's running the home function, um, and that is going to print running home. Then it's going to run the timer update function. Then it's going to run the get token values function, right? So if we, we do a run through of this, every time it gets pinged, it's going to go into timer update, run all of this math, and then it's going to call bot name update twice. And then it's going to go and call get token values. And so it's going to run through all of this and it's going to call uh, bot name updates for each token for each server. Now there's definitely ways I could loop through this instead and, and uh, definitely that would be something worth doing in the future. Okay, finally, if we go to the main function, what's happening when we boot this up is uh, first of all, on ready, it's saying I'm in. So it's just giving that confirmation. Um, it's also uh, over here, getting the token and, and running the timer bot. Um, it's doing client.run. It's also creating the new client instance at the top. Now, this is where I'm still a little bit um, unclear on exactly how this works because I don't know the discord.py library that well. In fact, I largely haven't used it because it's asynchronous Python and it's just a little bit out of reach. Still, as you see, I actually started this in Integromat, so I'm pretty proud of where we got to already. Um, the What I've noticed is the client.run, that seems to be pretty important for keeping the bot online. When I commented that out, it stopped working. Um, I was a little bit surprised because the thing that's getting pinged over here is, um, it, you know, as I showed in the other video, we set up a uh, recurring call with uptime robot, though I'll show you, we actually, here I used cronjob.org so I can get pinged every minute. Um, and also I'm using Alongside cronjob.org, I'm using uptime robot. And so what that means is there's two services pinging this and keeping it alive. And so that's prevented it from going down. Whereas on uptime robot alone, uh, this was going down every day or two. And then, you know, I'd have to run in and just hit the start button. So uh, again, taking a look here, when we run these functions, there's actually nothing here. Um, I'm not sure what actually keeps the bot alive. What I noticed, um, is that so I showed the, you know, in, in part two, I showed you how I was keeping the Raider bot alive and how I was keeping the Orem bot alive. And those servers are actually still running just to keep the bots online. Uh, I haven't figured out how to combine all of that into this one routine. So all the updates are coming through here. And if the bot goes offline, you'll still see the name update. The problem is that the bot will drop to the bottom of the membership list, so it becomes much less useful. So let's just head over to cronjob.org. And we can see right here, so I have these pointed at all three servers. It's pretty easy to create a cron job, and you can set it for every minute. So once you do that, you have your minute by minute updates. Uh, and again, using uptime robot as a fallback is a pretty good idea. It's worked out well. Um, the good thing about it is that if the server stops responding for three minutes, for whatever reason, uh, say Replit is overloaded or, or there's some other kind of thing going on, then cronjob.org is going to switch off. So that's where it's nice to have uptime robot running at either every five minutes or at this point, you, you know, every half an hour, just so that there's kind of a long wave um, like a lower frequency ping going, that's less likely to get shut down. And then it'll give you the opportunity to put cron job back up before they both go down. Um, and for all this effort about keeping the server alive, uh, what's kind of maybe funny and silly is that, 
you can just upgrade and and the always on thing, it costs five bucks a month. So I'm doing this more out of pride than anything else, because I mean, the amount of time I've spent saving $5 a month is, is much more than that. Um, but you know, it's just fun to figure out how to do things for free and uh, have that option. So yeah, this is it. This is the next evolution of the Discord bots. Uh, this is how to make bots that update every minute for free, uh, which is pretty cool. And uh, in some upcoming videos, I think I'm going to start to make bots with actions. So we'll show how to handle those. But I'm pretty sure we can create new app routes here, basically construct our API um, and you know, start pinging different commands uh, to these different routes and then writing the custom functions for them. So I'm almost certain that's how it works. Maybe there's another way, but uh, I guess we'll find out soon. And uh, uh, hopefully the next video won't start out with, oh yeah, I guess I was wrong in that last one. Uh, so here, anyways, uh, either way, it'll show I learned something. So uh, we're done here. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something. I'll share this in the links and uh, remember to subscribe and uh, give a like, send a comment. If you have any questions, happy to answer them. And we'll be coming out with more of these if you're finding them useful. So thank you very much.